All right, I don't know why it went to sleep. Let me find my mouse so I can make my preview bigger. All right, so yeah, tighten up your Drupal code using PHP Stain. My name is Mac Laman. I'm the maintainer of PHP Stain Drupal. And so this is like beginner intro advanced, like it just helps explain what is PHP Stan. So PHP Stan is a static analysis tool. The name is derived from kind of the word like PHP S T A N. I was like, huh, well played when I saw that. Um, so it helps you find bugs in your code um, without writing tests, although as somebody who believes in test-driven development, I hate that phrase, but let's face it, a lot of people don't write tests. But it, it can be a way, like, before you do write your test, you write some code, scan it, like, hey, your if statement is going to always be true. Because um, PHP code doesn't get compiled, you know, like, it's a scripting language, it gets compiled when the web server runs it. So that means your bugs aren't noticed until the web server tries to execute it. Sure. So that's so PHP stand is the static analysis tool. And then PHP stand Drupal is the extension that makes PHP stand able to scan and analyze Drupal code. Um, it's an extension that I toyed away for oh, 2018. That's why. 2018 is when I first started to work on it, um, and that's when I was working at Centaro. It was meant to be like part of like a tooling that we were going to build, and in 2019 it was officially released. Another chair. There's one more. Before we dive into more about like what is PHP stand and how does this all work, it's what about X? Which I guess like nowadays maybe this isn't as much of a talk or a question, but like when it first came out, it's like, well, I already have these build tools, or maybe you don't have any and you just heard of them all. So it's kind of like step up onto why PHP stand is useful. Um, so you out of the box you can do linting with PHP. So you can do PHP L, pass it a file, and it'll say you have a syntax error. Um, so you can catch syntax errors, but it doesn't test if your class isn't actually, if a function is not defined or the variable's got a typo in it. Um, so in this example, I tried to bold, you can see it's like hook node insert, and in it it says if node is public, there's a typo. It's not saying published, no, it's small, but there's a typo in there, it's supposed to be is published, there's a typo. If you lint this with P, there's PHP, there's no syntax errors, it's just, it's a typo. So then you could use PHP code sniffer, which tokenizes a single file and breaks it down and lets you do like coding standards. Um, it can detect lots of things, but again, it can't find a typo that calls a method that doesn't exist unless you added like spell check, but that would get like to be a little absurd. There is FAN and SOM, which are two other static analysis tools. FAN is built out of Etsy, um, requires the AST extension, so AST stands for abstract syntax tree thing. Code gets parsed into a tree of statements and all the other goodies. Um, and Psalm is built and maintained by Vimeo, which is really cool to know that Etsy and Vimeo are like really big PHP users. Um, the one problem is that Drupal does dynamic auto loading, like for the wonderful ability to install and uninstall modules, that means that it's not a dumped autoloader. Like normal PHP projects, you do Composer Require, and it knows these are all my namespaces and classes, where Drupal's like, I want to plug it in and be very stateful. And those two projects, it was really hard to create an extension that could mimic Drupal's autoloading, so that way you could discover classes. And then you have PHP stand, which was a lot easier to integrate, and it also uses the PHP parser library. So it is a PHP code that creates the abstract syntax tree. So you don't need to have an extra extension in your environment. Um, so it can verify calls the classes and their methods. So it can see that, hey, is published, or is published with the typo, that doesn't exist on node. Like, 
that method doesn't exist. And you're like, what? Yes, it does. Oh, I made a typo. And you could actually go back and fix your code before running it. Um, and it also has a system for defining return types. And Drupal has a lot of dynamic return types. Think if you have entity storage, are you getting a node? Are you getting a block content? Who knows? Well, you do know. But like technically in the type system, it's a generic interface. So like on that, what can PHP stand do for you in your code besides finding typos to unknown methods? So there are different levels um, on phpstand.org. You can find these all written up, but there's nine levels. Zero is kind of like, does it run or does it crash? Um, I skip one and go straight to two. I recommend everybody to at least start at level two. Um, that's when you can do check for unknown methods, like in our case before. Um, validating PHP docs, which are great. So if you say um, in your method, like string, blah, but in your PHP doc, you say it's actually an array, it'll say, hey, your PHP doc says an array, but you did a strict typing on a string. Little things, which is great when you're doing lots of work. Um, and then you can go all the way down, like report wrong union types and reporting, um, calling methods on nullable types. It can really drill down into it, and I didn't even cover bleeding edge on here. It starts to do like a lot more advanced options. Um, but if you're curious on that, the PHP stand website, phpstand.org, goes into depth about all the rules and what bleeding edge might give you. Um, for me personally, I run on nine with bleeding edge, and then I'll explain how I manage that, because if anybody here has done that and they get the wonderful error of, you did hook form alter, and form is an array, so please define its schema shape. Um, yeah. <laughs> so level one, Drupal 10 runs PHP and at level one. Actually, not Drupal 10. Let's say Drupal, because with Drupal 10.0, it was actually added as a development dependency. So every patch for Drupal core runs through PHP stand <coughs> at level one. Um, if this is something that you think you'd like to get in on contribution, because PHP stand is telling you the error, and then we have to go fix it. Um, there is an issue tag PHP stand dash two to get Drupal core bumped to level two, and then the goal is to go to level three and level four. And by the end of this talk, I hope you realize why that's important and can be really valuable to new contributors as well, besides just using it in your own projects. And if you're on GitLab CI now, which Drupal CI is being deprecated, so all contrib modules are running on GitLab. It's running every contributed project with PHP stand at level zero unless they customize it. And like, I had to like take a minute and think because I gave this talk two years ago here. And it's like in two years, it went from being this obscure tool to now every piece of Drupal code is getting analyzed by it for code quality. And like, that's just really cool to see happen. Um, there's also a PHP stand baseline. So before when I said I run at level nine, and with bleeding edge, if there's certain errors that I don't want to fix right now, or that I know I can't fix, I put it in the baseline. It basically says, I will accept these errors. So if, when you go after this and you add PHP stand to your projects, you're going to set it at level nine and say, you know what, all the existing things in my code, I'll just accept it. And then all your new code, you can adhere to the rules and then create backlog sprints to go and work on some of those errors. Um, so the baseline is a great way to just get started and say, I'm not, I don't have to worry about ex fixing everything at once. It's, I will create the baseline. Question about the slide you showed before. Yes. I can tag the issue with higher numbers or it's only the PHP stand two? Ah. So if you are doing, um, for your contrib modules, you have to add a PHP stand neon. So you can give your module a PHP stand config to run at a higher level. But by default, it's running it without specific configuration, and that will run it at level zero. Um, so yeah, so the baseline, like Drupal Core has this, so that's part of what fixing the errors are. They're in the baseline, like preparing for level two. Uh, all right, so let's analyze that example code with PHP sync. So before we had hook node insert and the typo on is published. I'm gonna walk through that a little bit more. So in here, well, it says is pub we got the typo, and it's going to say that there's a call to an undefined method on entity interface is pub lead. Like, great, I have a typo. I am going to go and, okay, yeah, I'm going to get frustrated. Oh, I didn't update the slide. So 
pretend that's not the typo anymore, that says is published. And you, and you fix it and you rerun PHP stand and it says call the undefined method is published entity interface. And you're like, what the hell, I fixed it. Because it's entity interface, not node interface or publishable interface, whatever is the method belongs to. So it's a hook, which means that you own the type, the um, type hint on the argument, change the type hint to say node interface, the correct item, and now PHP stand will say, oh, this method exists. Oh yeah, entity published interface. And then it will be happy and green. So in doing that, it actually makes you write a little bit better of code because you are having the correct interface there and you can actually know all the methods that are there and not have it be too generic. So that, like going through, like that's one example there. Um, so we'll walk through PHP stand, uh, go through PHP stand and its extensions. So again, talked about PHP stand, checks your code. Um, it detects incorrect namespacing, and I love this part of it. Um, 2017, 16, I was working with Boyan, we're building Drupal Commerce 2, and we're on GitHub and using Travis CI, and we both use Max. And we pushed the test and they kept crashing in Travis because it said they couldn't find a class. I'm like, it's there, like source, blah, 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 it's there. Yeah, well, Macs aren't case sensitive. And we had, the in, our namespace was right, but it was like a lowercase instead of an uppercase. So two senior engineers building Drupal Commerce, they were supposed to be like wizards, spent four hours on Slack, wondering why it ran in our machines and not Travis CI. But if I had had, PHP stand to say, oh, this class doesn't exist, or it says the namespace is wrong, would have caught that. Um, one of the things that came out is ex the extension installer, so that when you have these extensions that I'll talk about, you don't have to do anything, like you just compose or require, blah, and they're automatically configured, and it will be running with the system. Before, um, has anybody used Drupal check? Or heard of it? I first wrote Drupal check because configuring this thing was kind of a pain and I wanted it to be like a low level effort way to do it. It's not needed anymore because PHP stand did all that now out of the box or via this one extension. So there's the PHP stand deprecation rules. So this is for de detecting usages of deprecated classes, methods. When you think of the upgrade status module or yeah, Drupal check, I guess, that's the extension doing all the work there, is it will read the PHP doc and it will say, hey, this says it's app deprecated and show the message. Um, actually a really cool enhancement that landed a few months ago is I made a contribution to do scopes or custom scopes. So for example, in test, you could do like a legacy test. We could do like at legacy or like at group legacy or suffix with legacy. PHP stand Drupal supports that. So if there are tests that test legacy code, it calls that a deprecated scope. So it won't throw errors, because previously it was. Um, and then I don't have it in this talk, but for the upgrade, there's a new method called backwards compatible call. And that will let you do in your contrib support multiple versions of Drupal core without breaking people. The one issue was, let's say like it uses callables, the first one, is the happy path, the second one's the deprecated path. We don't want errors to show up on that second path because it's supposed to be there. The PHP stand Drupal extension works with deprecation rules to ignore that path too. So that way you get like true results. You know how to do like ignore this line. Um, so yeah, that's a really great package. And it became a dependency of PHP stand Drupal when I did that work for the node, for the scope resolving. So it's used by Drupal core. So Drupal core is using this for all of its deprecation stuff. I found an issue that said we should adopt this, and I was like, hey, it is, great. Um, so PHP stand Drupal, and it does a lot of the glue to make PHP stand and the deprecation rules work or be smarter when analyzing Drupal code. But it also does other things, like when you do Drupal container or Drupal service, it tells PHP stand, oh, you've got entity type manager. Well, that's entity type manager interface. Like it actually lets the code know what the service object is, Entity storage and query return types. So if you do Drupal entity type manager get storage, it knows that you have nodes and it will be node storage interface. And it allows you to configure that too. So like paragraphs, paragraphs could say, this is my entity class, this is the storage. 
Um, if it's not defined, it does a good guess on what it should be. Um, checking if you use internal classes, I actually have come to not like this one as much, but if you are extending the class that's not part of the API, like a form, it will warn you, um, which then you can just choose to accept. And also supports checking deprecated global constants. So when you do like define and you put a constant, we can't actually use PHP's reflection API to know anything about it. Like we just know it exists. Um, so there's a hard-coded rule as Drupal core deprecates its, major, its um, constants, we track them manually and report them. There's actually an issue for Drush because Drush started doing a lot of deprecations and then PHP saying Drupal can help you detect deprecated constants from Drush. There is the PHP stand PHP unit extension. So this, if you're doing like PHP unit tests and you call like this create mock or certain as like self assert instance of, PHP stand can read these and do better um, reflections of your code. Say, oh, you created a mock of this instance type. Um, so that way assertions actually influence how PHP stand it analyzes your code. Um, this is, I didn't know, but it was added to Drupal core, which is really cool. And I guess they did it for the level two work. It reduced a thousand errors that were being reported because it understood how to parse PHP unit tests code better. Um, there is another one that I don't use as often, but it's PHP saying prophecy. So a lot of people might use the prophecy mock, you like this, prophesize. It's another mocking library. And this extension allows you to say, oh, I'm working with a mock. I know it's actually a node, not this double object, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's another one. So if you do use the prophecy mocking, it allows that to uh, understand it. So, so we're all developers and we want to play, but it's like, oh, this is going to make life so much easier, make my code stable, I'm a tech lead. And instead of, instead of telling my juniors all the time, like, hey, you have a typo here, you got to fix this, it can be automated. So here's how you add PHP stand to your Drupal code base. It's real simple. Actually, no, it's really hard. So brace yourself. No. Composer required dash dash dev Drupal core dev, which you all actually already have, right? Because you're writing tests with your code. Of course. Of course. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it because PHP stands a dependency of Drupal's dev meta package. Two years ago, it was this. You had to like add PHP stand and the extension installer, and then PHP stand Drupal in the deprecation rooms. And I'm like, again, I was looking back, it's like, that's really cool that like Drupal's adopted these kind of tools, and it's that easy to get code quality like tools in your uh, for your projects. And then to run it, you just do PHP vendor bin PHP stand to analyze. Then you do dash dash level two, and you pass it a path, and it will bloop. It'll go scan everything. So this is how I do it. Um, I'll add the PHP stand prophecy because there's still some code I have or contrib extensions that ha or contrib modules that use prophecy mocks. Um, but the bigger part is this is what a PHP stand.neon file might look for me. So level nine, I put in my paths and with my Drupal sites, I actually have a source directory and a top level test directory. I throw them all in there. I include the bleeding edge. I didn't write down the exact notes, but it can do like some more stringent analysis on like arrays and objects. So that's why it's called bleeding edge because it could just be unconventional rules or a little bit more strict. And then I also include my baseline. So that's how you add the baseline is you do includes their PHP samples. That's just a giant file that says accepted errors or ignore errors. Um, and then since I have that PHP stand.neon, all I have to do is just run PHP stand. And it knows these are the paths to go to and what level to use. So if you did want to add it to your contrib, you could take, you don't need to specify paths because it will scan the source directory correctly, but you just need level nine. And you can choose to do the includes that way as well. So modules can have their own baseline. So you can add it to your contributor projects, accept it, and let contributors help you whittle it down. So here's, let's dive into some of the magic. That is PHP stand Drupal, little sparkles. Auto loading. This was the first bit of work I did and I needed to rewrite it. But, so it allows path-based auto loading. Um, actually, this is out there. It does, it works like Drupal, but not, and that's why I said I need to rewrite it. Drupal has started to support auto wiring of services where it's more magical and PHP is a little, Drupal is a little bit dated in that regard. 
Um, also, Drupal has some legacy files, you know, that great includes folder that has like bootstrap.ink and um, file.ink. It loads those for you. So that way it, you don't have to worry about that. Because otherwise, in that info file, there's a way to do like scanned directories and you'd have to go and update scanned directories, like scan all these things. And PHP saying Drupal tries to mimic Drupal's actual bootstrapping process. Because what if you scanned all those directories but what if those wouldn't actually be loaded? Like some of them might not actually be loaded in Drupal's normal operating state. So that's why it doesn't just say, just scan Drupal and take all this code. It tries to make sure that it actually mimics a running Drupal site for when it does some of the like container work and all that. Um, all, all extension namespaces are registered. So it's not like reading your core dot, your extension file and saying, oh, you only have node and user installed. I have an issue opens that you could say that like these are my modules I have installed on my site only treat it as those are installed and then do the scan um, it loads all your dot ink files for hooks like views that ink tokens that ink um, and also all the drush stuff as well so that way it can be used to scan your drush commands so the service container so again so it loads all the services dot yaml this needs to be reworked to like actually load the yaml files and build a real container um, again, the reason why it needs this is Drupal stores everything in the database. Even like Symfony, you can dump the container to a file and it uses it, but Drupal doesn't do that. It's all cached in the database. So it maintains a service map and then it has a rule that says, hey, somebody fetched the service, go into the service map and find out what class it is. Um, so that way when you're doing container get or Drupal <coughs> service, it can actually find deprecated services because in service.yaml, there might be a deprecated tag on it. So every time you get it, it'll say, hey, you're fetching like entity type man, like let's say they did, no, um, entity manager. That was it, entity manager was the big one. Hey, you fetched entity manager, that's deprecated because now it's been moved into like 10 different things. Um, which is a good, that was a good thing they did. But this would actually help you find those, catch those instances. Which then, let's say you called entity type manager and you called a method that's actually been delegated to another one because it's like an overloaded service. When you call that method, it'll detect that it was deprecated and then warn you. So like Drupal service, blah, 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 call a method. That way you know, oh, I need to go fix. It's not a deprecated service, but the method I'm calling on is deprecated. Which I think by now, everybody's kind of seen and gotten used to with all the major version upgrade work. Um, entity integration. So they said, this is what the mapping could look like and you can add in your own. So it can determine like, oh, I have a content entity or my entity type or, you know, the block class extends content entity. Why well, don't storage it has if it doesn't have one set? Or you can specify a storage. Um, I, think I'm, I think commerce has it or I've added it. So like, wait, like all the Drupal commerce, there's like eight entities. Well, it's got a mapping. So that way when PHP stands, scans it, it knows that when you call a commerce product, it's returning a product interface. Um, so that way you get the correct cl classes. Um, when you call load, it will say, oh, I actually have a node. Normally you'd have to say like, if instance of node interface, like do instance of checks, like tell it, now it just knows. Um, and then contrib can define their own link, their own mappings. I'll share the slides, there's a link on here, but there's one where like paragraphs could provide it and all of a sudden get it included whenever it's installed. And here's an example for some of the tests. So we call it like get storage node and it knows that it's node storage or taxonomy term storage. Um, then when loading and manipulating it, it knows that it's gonna be a node or null. This, I was so excited I had a contributor come out of nowhere and just help start with this. And I was like, this is really cool. Um, and how it actually can infer the entities you're working with. One of the big things too is entity queries. Um, one of the most controversial changes, in my opinion, was forcing to add an access check call to entity queries in Drupal core. Otherwise, it's gonna throw an exception and break your site. Um, so PHP stay in Drupal, I sat for a while, and they can detect if you make an entity query without that check. Sometimes it's false positive or misses it, because it's actually a really hard problem, but it helps you with that. Um, so that way, if you do make an entity query and you forget to tag it, for you forget to call access check, it will warn you before you run the code. Render arrays, this was really fun. So in Drupal, 
post Drupal Geddon, when you could like inject callables to the render array and then get executed, and everybody just had to patch their sites. So Drupal 8, 9, 10 has a trusted callback interface, a render callback interface. Essentially, if you're going to have a callback in a render array, you must input the callable must be of this interface and specify the methods. Kind of a pain, really hard to detect, but there's a rule now that checks that. So if it handles pre-render, post-render, access callback, and lazy builders, all the things that are in render arrays and have callables. So it'll warn you and say, hey, this callback is doesn't implement this interface, or it's not actually listed in the method that this interface says you have to define. Drupal 10 added a trait, so you can use a trait instead on the method. It supports that as well. Um, supports all the different formats. And one thing that I added in, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to do this, but if you use a closure and put it in a form, it's going to explode because Drupal serializes its forms into the database sometimes, and you can't serialize closures without some extra workarounds. So it'll say like, hey, you have an uh, anonymous function being used for a callback, don't do that, you're in a form um, to help guard you, which is great if you have junior developers on your team that have never like stubbed their toe in that way. So that's one reason I love PHP stand. It's like, I am less of the bad guy telling my juniors or like new folks, like, here's how you do things, because it's doing that automatically and giving them that feedback. The loaded, in oh, loaded includes. So if you call module load include, I think is gone or will be gone with Drupal 11. Um, but if you call load includes from the module handler, it will require those files for you. So that way, this is why I like how it works versus saying scan all the directories. Because what if you call a function that was loaded by a file? If PHP stand was just scanning all the directories, it would assume that function would be available. So that's where it's more real, if you will, because you have to load the file before you can call the function. Um, so it verifies that the file exists, it performs the require once to bring it into scope. This one I love is stub files. So in PHP stand, there's stub files and it's like writing PHP docs. It's overwriting the PHP docs for a class. Um, what I think was great in like the whole concept of generics and templates just over my head, but it improved entity support. So Briefly, I tried to copy in part of it, but for this interface, it says template T of type data interface. It means it's an array that contains type data interface. And then how it's traversable in array access, but then there's field item interface. So all the fields in Drupal entities are type data, and they just are the whole way down. So then field item list extends this interface and says, oh, my T, my template, it's not just type data interface, it's actually field item interface. And then I couldn't fit it, I did fit it on here. So, nope. But entity will say, when you do like entity get, and you try to get the field or the magic method, PHP stand now knows that it has, it is traversable, and its template is field item list. So that way when you get your field and you get your value, it knows that it's actually a field item. It doesn't necessarily know what kind of field yet, but it, it yells at you a lot less. It knows that this is accessible in there, and it's not a, I always get upset, it was just like, you can't access first on type data interface. I'm like, well, it's not just type data interface, it's a higher level of an interface there. So, makes it a little bit smarter. And then here's an example for entity field item list interface. So if you have an entity reference field, it says the template is entity interface because it contains entities. Um, so this is not going into Drupal core. I would love it to go into Drupal core, but there's coding standard issues because it says this isn't valid. We just put in PHP stand Drupal and we make it smarter and better. And then maybe, hopefully we can eventually start shoving this back into core. Um, and then also it lets you do custom object types. So this one I finally sat down and did. So if you were to call like cache backend git, that always returns false or an object. <coughs> now, PHP send knows that that object has data, created, tags, valid, expired, checksum, and serialized as properties. So if you access those, it won't say, you access blah, blah, blah on an object that doesn't, we don't know its shape. Now you do, and PHP send is aware of it. Um, so that's really cool. Like I've done that for various array objects. So I've just said, hey, PHP stand type, here's my array shape. 
And then you can use that. Like there it says return cache object. It's an array of cache objects. So instead of having to copy around that like object notation, you can reference the name. Again, the docs uh, on phpstand.org, there's a bunch of docs on subfiles and writing PHP code and using these PHP docs to help your analysis. And what's really cool is even though it says PHP stand type, the whole object notation at the end of it is used by Psalm and Fan and PHP Storm can read it and I'm pretty sure VS Code. So this new way, quote unquote new way, of doing writing generics and array shapes is actually supported by all editors and most analysis tools. So it's not just like a PHP stand thing. All right, uh, go through some miscellaneous awesome. So there's the class resolver and it will know what class you get back. So you can say service class resolver, get instance from definition. It knows that it will return that class. So it's like a helper method for creating objects that aren't in the service container. Um, entity access results. So this is really cool. If you call access create, um, so I forgot the whole, how this method works. Access can return an object or a boolean based off the third parameter. So that's the example on the bottom. It says, I have a node, I'm viewing the label, null for the user and true says return as an object. PHP said knows that it will return the object and not a boolean. So I don't know if anybody else is doing this, but I found plenty of code where somebody says if entity access true and what, or just says if entity access and doesn't explicitly check if it's a boolean or something else. Well, if you do a boolean check against an object, it's true because it's not empty, it's not zero. Um, one thing that PHP Sin has made me do is be a lot stricter in how I write my code for that case because it, PHP Sin would say, hey, you're doing an if operation against an access result interface. It'll always be true because it's always set. And that actually can solve some security bugs if you have like a junior who doesn't know this since we have this weird flag that toggles between for like compatibility reasons. I'm um, extending internal code. I said I'm not like a super big fan of it, but at the same time, I am because it tells you like, hey, you're extending code that's not part of the API, it could break. Um, so it checks if a class extends anything annotated at internal. Um, it flags when it's outside of a shared namespace. So if like shared na namespace would be, if it's inside Drupal core, it won't complain because it's Drupal core, but if your module extended an internal class from Let's say commerce, say commerce had like an internal class and then you wrote a contrib for commerce that extended the internal class, it would yell at you say, like, hey, this isn't part of our guaranteed API, so it could break. And then you can make that decision of, yeah, it's fine, I'll deal with it, or actually no, oh, I didn't realize because who reads the PHP doc on classes half the time? I don't, because it, all it says is, this is a class. Um, and I might not notice that it's tagged. So again, we'll go back to just like, here's how you add PHP stand to your code base. Um, so again, Composer required Drupal core dev, and then you just do PHP stand, analyze, you pass the level, and then get it into your CI so it starts running on every single check. I did something before you added the previous slide about Composer require two things, I think. Oh, because if that's how I add it with um, the PHP stand profit or the yeah the prophecy, I don't necessarily always recommend adding that because I don't know if people use it. Um, but yeah, that's when if you know you're using prophecy mocks, add that other library. But for like, I don't think a lot. Let's face it, a lot a lot of projects don't always have tests, or they don't use mocks. They might be using functional tests. But yeah, you could add the prophecy one, and then scan your code. Um, some items on the horizon, which I'm always interested in feedback on like what could make it better to use or like, hey, the support could be better. The issue queue is there, but it's nice to just hear from folks. Um, so the improved container support to avoid issues with auto wiring or kind of complex services. Started like dealing with like, there's a parent and then that's extended by something else that's also like a private service. I'm like, why am I rebuilding the logic that exists? Um, so there's that. Oh. I have a PR half done that you could use a drush command and it will dump your PHP stand configurations, like all of your entity mappings, 
and say that you have these 30 modules installed. So in PHP stand runs, it will only load those modules as part of its analysis instead of everything. So that way it could be a little bit more um, in tune to your actual site and also your field information. And know like field underscore address is an address. So in the dynamic return types, we can say, hey, when it's um, entity interface get, it's gonna be a field item list of address items, which means that we can then stub the address item and say that it has properties of postal code and blah, 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 all those things. Um, so that way all of your entity code could be like actually analyzed and say, oh, this field doesn't exist. Like that would be really cool. Um, there's some plugin manager rule cleanup. Early on I added some rules to make, if you're writing a plugin manager, there's a lot of ways you can do things you can miss like not adding caching, which means if you have annotated plugins, it's always gonna read your disk, and when it comes to web application performance, hitting the disk is the most expensive operation out there. So like it has a warning, hey, you didn't put cache. Um, but some things are like a false positive or just a little too noisy. Better Drush support. Um, Drush has some like folder for legacy symphony that doesn't always get loaded, or the deprecated global constants. Um, so those items, and then any suggestions, like, hey, we were trying to analyze this code, but it didn't catch this, or false positive, or like, hey, it said that there's an error, but there actually wasn't. I'm all ears for that kind of improvement, and it can be like an issue, or if you see me in the hallway later, like, hey, we had this one problem. <coughs> um, a few resources as you go down the journey of using PHP stand. There is a PHP stand channel on Drupal Slack, and I'm there, and so are a lot of other people. Um, I'm blanking on a name, but Open Social heavily uses PHP Stand level nine, and they're always King Dutch is his handle. Um, he's always he's in there as well. There's the folks working on Drupal Core with PHP Stand in there, so it's it's a nice little community going. And I also have it set up that GitHub will drop a message whenever there's a release. So if there's a new release, you can see why did my CI fail? Oh, well, Matt did a bad release. Hey, we can go ping him and ask him to undo that change, or say, oh great, let's see what else it's finding and what improvements are coming. Um, and that, to be fair, that has happened a few times. I dropped it, and then all of a sudden the next morning I wake up like, Matt, this is a little too aggressive, and it broke a few things. Um, I try not to do that, though. There's a few links, and again, I'll share the slides, but on Drupal.org, there is a PHP stand documentation page, because I didn't want it to live in the GitHub wiki. I wanted it to be part of Drupal itself. Even though everything else is done on GitHub, this is a, I didn't want it to be a wiki there, so there is a docs page, and I think more folks are starting to contribute to it now that GitLab CI is running. And it has some tricks if you are using GitLab CI with your contrib module. Um, phpstand.org, the repo is mglomin, phpstand, dash, or hyphen Drupal. Um, Baram did a great talk about static analysis. That's a contributor who helped with all the node storage, entity storage work. And then from Drupal Dev Days Vienna, Simon from Factorial did a talk about adding PHP stand to a large scale project and just how they convinced the developers that this is a good idea or the client and that they used the baseline and that they just iteratively worked and how it shaped up their code. So again, I will upload these to the website so you can get to the link or if your phone's got the fancy, like you can take a picture and then select text, you might be able to grab it that way ahead of time. And that is it. Thank you all for coming. Any questions? All right. Um, can PHP stand fix code? Can PHP stand fix code? If you pay for PHP stand pro, there's like an online tool and it will try to fix the code for you. So Andre, the maintainer of PHP stand does have like a paid service called PHP stand pro. Um, I haven't tried it because I haven't had a need for it, but it gives you like a web UI and I think it try it can try to fix the code, or he's working on something that will. So kind of like how PHP CS has PHP CBF code beautifier. I think there's something underway there. I'd be extremely nervous about it because I don't like auto-generated code in the least bit, just because it's usually something always goes wrong. But it would be neat for like some of the small errors if it could. Or if PHP Sand Drupal, when reporting the error, could say here's how it might be fixed. Like Rector. The head rector book. Any other questions? Yeah. What would you say is, um, in your experience, the best place to 
to put PHP scan in your development workflow? Like, how often are you using it when you're writing code and when are you running it? Yeah. Just for the so the question is like, when is it, when does PHP scan live in the workflow? Like, how often do I run it? Um, I'm one of the lazy developers who just uses my CI for everything. Like, I don't like pre-commit hooks because it slows me down. So it's every CI job. Sometimes I'll run it locally, like when I'm working on stuff and I want to kind of check myself. But definitely in the CI. So every commit should get scanned. Um, locally, I'll do it. Like, if I just did, like, a big coding session, I'll take a break, run it, see, like, what did I do? Um, but as often as possible. That's reasonably, reasonably. It shouldn't slow you down. It should be... I'm a big believer in it should stop the final product, but not while you're building. So like, there might be some issues. You said, if you have an array, it wants you to try to define like the shape of the array, which is tedious, but also it's like a contract. Like you're accessing this array some way. I don't do that while I'm working. I do that as my tidy up for the end. Same with like coding standards. Like I'm gonna get my work done, my test screen, and then I'll go through and I'll make sure it's there. Um, but like if I do a big coding, I will run it just to say, did I screw anything up? Did I do a bad logic check somewhere? And it will say, this will always be true because you wrote your logic wrong. Like, oh, so I did. Um, because it's especially, as much as I like to do test driven development, a lot of times I do write tests after the fact or like in tandem. Well, your tests, all they're doing then is verifying code you wrote. So if you have bad logic, your tests are just verifying your bad logic and that's where PHP stand can go. Excuse me for a minute. Um, your assumptions are wrong. So, yeah. any other questions? Yeah. Um, if there's something I want to keep in the code, even if it's not best practice, where do I put that to say in order? Yeah. So the question is like, if if there's something you want to keep, is it not best practice, or it's like I know this is an error and I will live with it. There's the baseline, or if you know it's like this, we're never fixing this. Like it has to live like this forever. You can do slash slash, like so inline comment, at PHP stand dash ignore dash next line. So there is an inline way to do ignore next line. What's really cool is with PHP stand 1.11, which is coming out, I don't know when, you can say, it's like PHP CS, so you can ignore specific rules. You can do that with PHP stand soon. So you could say, ignore this next line for dot 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 reason and still get analysis for anything else. Because that's what always scares me. It's like, there's like one thing in here that I want to ignore, but what if something else breaks? So that's why I go for the baseline, because I'll accept it and it will just say this one error is allowed and not anything that might bubble up as an exchange. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit more about that baseline? Is that something that's auto-generated based on a run or? No, and you know what? I didn't put the command in here. Sorry, so in the docs, so what you do is you run PHP stand, and yeah, let's get back. To, so what you would add to this command is then dash dash generate dash baseline. So it's an option called generate baseline. And an example, I know on GitLab CI, so again, this is their tooling for like contributed projects. It will auto generate it for you. So you could choose to download it. Um, that's something I've even thought about for like my projects. Like, hey, if I forgot to generate it and it, down, it gave me one, why not? Um, so yeah, so you would do you would analyze it, but then add that option for generate baseline, and then that dumps the file. Um, the first time you do it, it doesn't automatically add includes um, PHP stand baseline to your configuration file. So you have to do that. I've done that. I don't know how many times where I forget to like, oh yeah, I have to actually include the baseline. Um, but yeah, so that's and that's all documented on the PHP stand website as well. Right. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, does PHP stand I recommend <coughs> at some level to change uh, code to use some new PHP features, like for example, uh, change, uh, switch, uh, change switch uh, case to match? Like, uh, yeah. So the question is if it can do any of the changes, kind of like offer was wondering if it could fix rules. That's what Rector is for. Um, so Rector is a command line tool that will rewrite your code. So you could say, find all instances of switch and migrate it to match. What I would love to see is if there could be a way like, hey, PHP stand found this error, invoke Rector to fix it. Instead of like, because Rector, I love it, but it's like taking a baseball bat to like a glass window. Like, it's everything. You can't just like surgically fix one thing. So it would be cool if you could say, given these PHP stand errors, Rector, can you fix them? 
like we know what the error is and maybe rector can then just do those few lines instead of because what if you don't want to do switch in all of your classes you could just say run this one file but that it would be neat if you do that in tandem but that is what rector is for um, like my, my motivation like is to learn myself to use what's new in the, yeah. in the PHP like and say if I still use some switch I want to like somebody like to say me yeah you could, and then there are other extensions. So on the PHP stand website, there are list extensions. Like I have that that says, use promoted constructor properties. Because we're in PHP 8, stop writing this. And I forget, my team forgets, because habits are hard. Or I am very strict about final classes and private everything. You can have PHP stand say, hey, this class isn't private. Or like nothing's extending it, make it private. Nothing's, that, like you have a protected property in a private class. Make it private. So you can, there are these like really, really defensive coding extensions as well that can help enforce that. Because Rector, like, you can review the diff, but if you're writing it and then you have PHP stand saying, no, 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 that causes you to write the code and will probably help you flip the habit if you want to adapt like the newer ones more. So yeah, I, 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 it's one thing, like I said, generate code behavior is everything. And I like the tools that kind of force me to fix behaviors. Right? Mike, or so, real quick, Bob, make it, make it, make it. regarding Drupal Core, a PHP stand, yeah. we're level one right now, I'm trying to get to level two. Like, how much? I don't have a real good feel. Like, what the appetite is amongst core contributors to actually be motivated to make that happen? Like, do you have any feel for that? I have no feel. I have no idea. There's Mondrake and somebody else. That I can't remember their handle because it's different on GitHub and Drupal, and I know it's the same person. Yeah. There's like a few small subset that are working on it, and I don't know the appetite. I feel like the core maintainers are a little bit warmer to it, but before it did cause grief and some pain. But it seems like everybody's pretty happy now. Um, I, so I don't know the level of effort. I don't know the plan because I'm not in on that. But I mean, I would love to see it. Like, what if we got to six? And I think that's good. Like, if we could get to like it's six. A, I mean, it's a, even getting from one to two. Is a big, a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of little changes. Yeah, I, and I, when I write uh, code, I try and get to level six as well, which is, you know, there's the new static stuff, which always kind of gets in the yeah. way you can get around. There's a lot of things that core does that will get flagged in your modules. But it's actually referring to like something in core, and that's yeah. yeah I'm, I'm just I, I've I've never really had a good handle on. Is it one of those things where, like, if the core um, committers, if they kind of drew not even a line in the sand, if there's a policy that any new patches to Drupal core, I'm sorry, merge requests to Drupal core, were you know have to pass level two or three or something with that. I mean, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I would love it if new code had to run at six, but the existing, like, like basically merge requests ran at six, but had ran at one. Right. So that way all new code was held to a higher standard. Because yeah, yeah. the problem is, like, we could run it at three, but the baseline is, like, stupid big. Yeah. And that's why they've been that doing it incrementally. Because it's like, let's commit a 16 megabyte file. <laughs> I'm like, no, we shouldn't be that. I've asked that question to a few of the core committers and, and prolific contributors, and I, I, I get a very similar answer. Yeah. Like no, it's very nebulous. Like no one really knows like what the yeah, because it's not like a direct core effort. Like it's just it's one of those things that's like it's moving along, <laughs> but I don't think there's like a concerted effort. Okay. Uh, is there a reason not to use PHP stand for a project? Is there a reason to not use PHP stand for a project? If you like berating your juniors on the little mistakes they make, maybe um, to be facetious. I, I don't know. I can't see one because it's. You, like, it's a scripting language that's prone for errors. I do a lot of front end stuff. It sounds like TypeScript to JavaScript. But that's, yeah. It's a little difficult maybe to get in, but once you're there, why once you're there, not use it? That's a great way. Think of it like anybody that's done JavaScript and then you move to TypeScript, like, I TypeScript, I can't. But it's the same concept. You're making your language more typed so that way you know what's happening or reduce bugs. I know it is nice that PHP is loosely typed, but you can still keep your code loosely typed, but use this tool to help Put some guardrails up. It's like bowling with the bumpers. Um, and I know we are at. Any other questions? I know. All right. Thank you for coming.
I hope it was a blast and that you found a new tool to use to make your code a little bit stronger. <laughs>